Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to be going through exactly how Excel will never be the same with the introduction of OpenAI's ChatGPT. Want to know how it will change the Excel game? Let's go ahead and find out. First, let's talk about how ChatGPT even works. The way that ChatGPT works is that you provided prompts in this area down below here, and it will return to you a message. What I found really cool about this is that it remembers what users say earlier in a given conversation. All right then, let's hop into Excel and get into our first example. In this example, we're tasked with returning the salary of employee number 846. We see here that all of the employee IDs are listed in column A and all of the salaries are listed in column D. Let's say that I'm brand new to Excel and I need to complete this task and I don't know where to start. So let's go ahead and ask ChatGPT to see what it recommends. So here we are in ChatGPT and we're going to enter in the following prompt. In Excel, I have a table with employee ID in column A and salary in column D. What function can I use to return the salary for employee ID 846? When I hit enter, ChatGPT is going to get to work. So it looks like ChatGPT is done with its response so let's take a look at what it said. Right from the top, it looks like ChatGPT is recommending to us to use the VLOOKUP function to return the salary for a specific employee ID. What's really interesting about this is that not only does it recommend us the function to use, it gives us the function that we could literally copy and paste into our Excel spreadsheet to get this to work. What I really like about this is that it's relating the arguments within the VLOOKUP function with our data set. So for example, the 846 is our lookup value. Well, since ChatGPT gave us the function to use, we might as well highlight it and copy it over to Excel. So we're back into our spreadsheet and I'm going to paste the function right here. And then I'm going to press enter. And just like that, it provides us the salary of 92,156 which is exactly what we expected to see. What I'm really starting to appreciate about this is that ChatGPT allows you to have a great starting point when solving problems. Let me show you what I mean. If we go into the function that ChatGPT recommended, we can see that this will only ever work if we're trying to find the salary for employee ID 846 and no one else. But what we can do from here is modify it to better suit our needs. So you know, instead of looking up the value of only 846, we could look up the value that's contained in this cell. So we still get the same answer because this cell contains 846, but if I was to change this to 308, then we get a different salary. All right then, let's get into our next example. In this example, we have a weekly employee timesheet, and what I wanna do is add up all of the total hours by the marketing department. What we can see is that the total hours is in column G and the department is in column C. Once again, let's pretend that we're brand new to Excel and we have no idea how to do this. So let's go ask ChatGPT and see what it recommends. So here we are in ChatGPT with the following prompt. In Excel, I have a table where I want to add the total hours by the marketing department. The department is in column C and the total hours is in column G. What function should I use? So it looks like ChatGPT is recommending the summit function for us to use and is providing us the syntax of the summit function. What I like about it is that it's also giving us short explanations as to each of the arguments within the summit function. And last but not least, just like our previous example, ChatGPT has provided us a function that we can copy and paste into our spreadsheet. So let's go ahead and select this text and copy it into our spreadsheet. So here we are back in Excel and I'm going to put the function right here. And then I'm going to press enter. And now we have our total hours for the marketing department. Now what if I've been asked to only add the hours for the marketing department for week ending May 5th, 2023? Let's go ahead and ask ChatGPT what I should do with this new piece of criteria. So here we are back in ChatGPT, where I'm going to continue the conversation with this next prompt. 
What function should I use to add the total hours for the marketing department in week ending May 5th, 2023? The week ending date is in column D. So it looks like ChatGPT is recommending us to use the SUMIS function to sum up the total hours for a specific department and week ending date in our table. Just like before, it's providing us the syntax for the SUMIS function and a little bit of an explanation about each of the arguments within it. We also have the function at the bottom here that we can copy and paste back into our spreadsheet. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're back into our spreadsheet and I'm going to enter in the function here and then press enter. And just like that again, the function works just as we expect it to. This is absolutely unbelievable. Just like our previous example, I really think that ChatGPT right now is a great way to start building our functions and solving problems. And then from there, we can just refine it to better suit our data. So in this case, I'm gonna go back into the function and instead of only referring to the marketing department, I'm gonna delete this so that we take into account the value in this cell here. Cause you know, it could be the marketing department, but it could also be these other departments too. And then instead of this date, we're gonna to refer to whatever value is in this cell here. By modifying the function so that it refers to cells, if I was to change this department to say, finance, then the total hours will automatically change. On to our last example. Before we move on to the next example, there's a question that I want you, the viewer, to ask ChatGBT and leave the answer down in the comments section below. The question that I want you to ask is, what does it mean to be proficient in Excel? Now there are a lot of differing opinions and answers to this question, and I'm curious to know what you get. Here's what it says for me. In this last example, I have a spreadsheet here where I don't want any users to be able to make any changes to formats or formulas. In order to do this, I know I'm going to need to apply some sort of VBA code or macros in order to protect my worksheets, but I'm not entirely sure what the VBA code needed is. Let's go ahead and ask ChatGPT to see if it can write us some code. So here we are in ChatGPT with the following prompt. In Excel, what VBA code can I use to protect all the worksheets? Incredible, so it looks like ChatGPT has provided us some VBA code that we can apply to our spreadsheet. So we're just gonna go ahead and copy this code and then go back into Excel. So here we are back in Excel and we're gonna enter in that VBA code. So to get to the spot to enter in VBA code, I'm just gonna right click this tab and then click on view code. Then I'm gonna paste in the code from ChatGPT and then go ahead and run this code. So when I exit this, I'm gonna try and make an edit to this spreadsheet and then I get a pop-up, letting us know that this is a protected sheet. So now we know that it works. Let's go ahead and make a change to another spreadsheet and we get the same pop-up. Now we know it definitely works. So from what I've seen so far, ChatGPT is really impressive. I really enjoyed how easy it was to ask a question and to also get a good response back that was easy to understand. But I wanna know what you think in the comments below. Does ChatGPT have its place in Excel and other Microsoft programs? And how do you feel about this type of technology becoming more and more common in our daily lives and in our work? And with all that said, I'll see you guys in the next video.